Okay, this is my porgy catch and cook. I'm gonna end up doing three dishes. Um, one of them will be sort of a spectacular failure, but anyway, that's cooking. Uh, somewhat fixable, as you'll see. So, this is my first porgy trip. This is also my first trip after I flipped the kayak which um, unfortunately was not caught on film but I didn't lose anything except my two rods and reels which did hurt I must admit and that's why I'm using this uh, field and stream trout rod which worked okay um, the basic setup here is a 3 16th ounce jig head I believe it's a gammy jig head um, it has a 2 watt hook. Uh, I have it tied to 8 pound floral leader and 8 pound braid. Um, it's connected with an FG knot and as usual with any kind of jigging I have a crazed loop knot at the end. Um, this is the smallest porgy I caught that day. I had well over a dozen. I ended up taking home I think 5 or 6 which is more than enough. Um, so we bleed them out. Uh, porgy is, they're pretty delicate. You, you really want to bleed out and then put on ice immediately. Uh, you don't want to have four or five sitting in the water on a stringer. So anyway, the bait I'm using is, uh, various freshwater gulp. That's a three inch minnow. I also used, um, the four inch flats worm and new penny I don't really think it matters this is porgy fishing it's kind of like sun fishing um, I had success using a drop shot too in the past anyway this is um between 15 and 35 feet that's where we found the fish that day and I am using a net just because uh, they're easier to handle. As you notice, I have these um, rubber car mats on the deck. And this is because last year on my porgy trip, the spines actually punctured the hull. I'm in an inflatable I-11S Hobie. And uh, big thanks to Brad, our Africaster on Stripers Online for giving me the idea using the car mats. They've been working great. So the technique here is just slow little bounces. Um, it's not like flute jigging. There are like one to two inch bounces off the bottom. You don't really want to cast too far because there's a lot of rocks and you're going to lose your jigs. Also, the hook set is your typical bottom fishing hook set where you do sort of a slow lift and if you feel weight, then you just keep lifting and reeling. You're not really, you know, crossing their eyes with porgies or even blackfish. It's a very similar hook set to blackfish jigging. Uh, I'm really quite surprised at the quality of the porgies in the western sound. Um, I used to think you had to go out east to catch 15 inch plus porgies, but they're definitely around. And as you see, as I'm bleeding this one, I took the previous one off the fish clip. And that goes it's in the cooler. It's 15. That's my buddy Lee. Yeah, a lot of fun that day. Um, anyway, here we're in about 35 feet. And, you know, with the 3 16th ounce jig, it takes a while to get down there. Also, this rod is um, sort of like a rubber band. It's, it's a very slow action trout rod, and it's not very sensitive at all. As you see, um, the fish has my jig, and I had no idea until I went to lift the jig. Um, I already ordered the replacement Zodius light spinner that I lost the day I flipped the kayak. Okay. Um, 
In the meantime, this will work just fine. The Rio is a Shimano Symmetry 500. I replace the fiber drag washers with Carbon Tex, and it's a neat little reel. I've I landed some big fish on that reel. So this was the biggest porgy of the day. Uh, it was over 16 inches. And um, yeah, the with the jig heads, you you definitely weed out the smaller fish. Uh, a two out hook, you're not gonna hook 10 inch porgies with that. So. Every porgy I caught today was a keeper. Uh, keeper being 10 inches. I think the smallest one was that first one, about 14 inch. Um, at this point, I'm just catching and releasing. Uh, it's very low pressure kind of fishing. I don't really care about the size of the porgies. So once I catch three, four, five, however many I want for dinner, um, that's it. It's not like fluking where I'm always looking for, you know, that trophy fish or striped bass. So the good thing about using a single jig for any kind of fishing is you can net all your fish. And since I'm releasing this one, um, I'm barely touching it. And it just stays in the net, pop the hook out, and I drop the net back in the water. They're really quite pretty uh, when they're alive. They got some blue, a little bit of pink to them. I think that's why blue and pink work so well in the western sound for fluke. Anyway, um, the first dish we're doing is just a couple of the medium sized porgies on the grill and we're gonna trim all the fins and then scale them. So I'm using a magic fish scaler and it works okay. Um, the scales don't fly around everywhere. These, you know, off camera, I just gutted them, took the gills out. So here I'm doing sort of a vaguely Vietnamese uh, sauce dressing. It's sort of like a salad dressing. Um, what you need is acid olive oil and salt everything else is optional so here I have equal parts uh, mint and basil and um, the other herb is parsley I go double the parsley so here I'm just crushing up some garlic we're gonna grind these up in a pestle and mortar uh, here I'm just chopping up a little ginger I'm going to pound those out too. Um, if you want to do a similar marinade uh, slash sauce with different ingredients, that's perfectly fine. Like you can do capers, oil pack olives, um, parsley, basil, you know, sort of be like a Mediterranean kind of flavors. Uh, here I just thinly slice a half a red onion. Uh, you can use shallots too. If you use shallots, uh, you want to soak that in the vinegar or lime juice for about 10 minutes. Uh, here is just one chili sliced. And I have two bowls. Just divide them up evenly. My cousin got this pestle and mortar. It's just a tiny thing. So you want some coarse kosher salt or sea salt, some black pepper, a uh, little bit of olive oil, and just pound it to a paste. Damn, nice. I left them pretty chunky for this dish. Uh, you don't need to get it to a fine paste. Then just divide that up between the two bowls. Um, next you're gonna grind through your basil and mint. 
uh, the parsley we're just going to slice and big shout out to my cousin Mark he's uh, his his camera work is pretty nice okay again just a rough oh, that's nice. rough grind rough paste you really need olive oil here when you're um, grinding up fresh herbs because without olive oil they're gonna oxidize they're gonna turn brown on you is that I have to do it in two batches uh, the salt works as an abrasive okay so we're gonna use uh, the juice of one lime and about equal parts apple cider vinegar you can use champagne vinegar uh, white wine vinegar any kind of vinegar Okay, so that's the vinegar in. Uh, next is the olive oil. You want the ratio to be about one to three. That's your standard uh, salad dressing ratio between acid and oil. And also a healthy pinch of salt, some black pepper. I also add um, just a drizzle of agave nectar. You could just use sugar. Uh, it shouldn't taste sweet. It just takes the edge off the acid a little bit. Uh, when you're slicing parsley or any kind of herbs, just slice it through once. Uh, don't go back and, you know, pound through with your knife. That's just going to get the edges uh, brown. So give it a stir. So you coat all the parsley with the olive oil. Uh, let's see agave nectar. Uh, now you want to taste and then reseason if you have to. So the porgies we're just going to rub down with a little olive oil, uh, salt inside and out, and you know lots of salt. If you think it's enough salt, just double it, and then you'll be about about at the level that you should be. <laughs> I also stuff the body cavity with um, a few branches of thyme. Now, okay, this is where the dish goes wrong. If you're too lazy to use a grill basket and if you're too lazy to clean the grill, your fish is going to stick. Um, this is completely my fault. I thought my cousin cleaned the grill for me. Uh, he thought I did it. But we're both in a hurry because we're losing light. And we want to shoot this video. So definitely if you have a fish basket, that's the way to go. So the so grill should be smoking place. hot. And the grates should be up. completely clean. Oh, um, and oh, since they're not, this fish is going to stick. But let's pretend I'm doing it the right way. You don't touch the fish until it's done cooking. So if your grate is clean and your grill is smoking hot, uh, you put the fish down, you don't touch it for at least three minutes. And after four minutes or so, then you test to see if, it, if the skin is going to release off the grill. And as you see, if your grill is dirty, uh, there is there's no amount of technique that can save you. But what's going to save us here is the sauce. Well, so good. you first sauce the plate. Um, you lay your fish down, and then you sauce over it. So even though I completely mangle the crispy skin that is, you know, pretty big part of the dish, uh, the sauce makes up for it. It's, uh, it's a real travesty. Uh, it's, this is pretty embarrassing for someone who went to culinary school and cooked professionally. Actually, 
my second station in New York was uh, the grill station of a seafood restaurant. So this is, uh, yeah, my chef sees this video. He's gonna, he's probably gonna kill himself. Anyway, you sauce over that big gashing wound that you made in your dish and it's fine. Just move along. No one's gonna notice. <laughs> so here I'm butchering out this, uh, I think this is a 16 incher. And I'm getting two fillets out. So, so this fish is already scaled. Um, here I'm just cutting the head off and just sort of got it, clean it out a little bit. And you apply pressure across the back of the fish. So you're kind of lifting the fillet while you slice through. And, uh, yeah, you just do the same on the other side. I cut right through the ribs instead of going around them. Uh, then you just cut the rib bones out of the fillet. So porgies are kind of tough to fillet if you don't scale them first. Um, if I'm not retaining the skin for a dish, then you want to go in with your knife. Um, you don't want to cut into the scales, you want to cut outwards. So the tip of your knife, you kind of trace along the edge of the fillet. And uh, that's how you get them off with the skin on. So as usual, we wrap our fillets in paper towels after rinsing them off in um, ice brine, like a cold salt water brine, and then we leave that in the fridge. So now we're going to saute these two fillets up, and here we're going to retain the skin. Is that new, so, uh the skin's gonna become crispy. You need a very hot pan, non-stick. Uh, that is grapeseed oil. When you lay the fish down, lay it away from you. And the skin is gonna curl. So what you do is either use your spatula or just your fingers and just press them down. You apply pressure for about 10, 15 seconds and then the skin is gonna set and then you're good to go. So definitely uh, salt, pepper, the skin side, lay them down in the pan, and then season the flesh side. Okay, so now the skin is set. You're gonna cook the fillets about 80% on the skin side, because you want that skin to be very crisp. And in the meantime, you sauce your plate. And this is the same sauce we use for the grilled fish. So now when you go to turn them, um, your spatula goes underneath, you gently apply pressure with your fingertips, and you turn them gently. You know, there's a lot of hot oil in the pan, so you don't want to get splashed. Um, do a little bit of basting just to keep the skin nice and crisp. And once you turn them, it should take about 30 seconds. You just give it a little bit of a poke to see how firm the fish is. That's it. If you're using a thermometer, about 125 to 130. Now, as for plating, you just plate over the sauce. Don't spoon any sauce over the skin. You want to keep that skin crisp. And we don't want it on the skin. Okay. Be a soggy, right? Yeah, we'll keep the skin crisp. Yeah, there's um, my cousin's photography. It's good stuff. And finally, on the last fish, we did just a simple sashimi platter. Um, with porgies, bream, you don't want to slice too thinly. It's just a very slight angle, um, about quarter of an inch thick. and um, lay them on a chilled plate. We're using 
uh, real Japanese wasabi here. Uh, most of the powdered or store-bought wasabi over here is uh, horseradish powder that's dyed green, which is fine. But if you can find real wasabi, definitely get that. And also pickled ginger. Uh, this pickled ginger is a little bit strong, um, but it's fine. The soy sauce we're using is a Japanese dipping soy sauce, but you can use dark soy too. I wouldn't use regular cooking soy sauce. It's, you know, it, it has a little too much sodium. There you go. Ginger on the plate and your wasabi on the side. And that's it. This is um, hopefully the last porgy catch and cook video I'll, I'll have to make. But... I hope you guys enjoyed this and um, please like, subscribe, questions, comments below. Thank you.